Hi, yep, I'm not finished with Dingo Pictures yet. I think I have a problem. I think I've watched all of them by now because I don't really have much else to do with my free time. And if you want to know which is the worst and which is the best, I can probably give you reasons for and against each one of them being amazing or awful in their own way. Some of them are so earth-shatteringly boring that you can't help but wonder what kind of mind was behind it. And then others touch upon a really dark theme that you probably wouldn't want your kids to be thinking about, say, before the age of 10. The latter is one that we're going to have a look at today. This is Janice the Little Pig, although sometimes it's referred to as Jamie the Little Piglet, and as is not unusual with Dingo Pictures, the cover art for most of the releases has something different. Sometimes it's called Baby, sometimes it's called Little Pig, and of course there is not a single edition of the cover art that has got anything to do with the actual film itself, with the exception maybe of this one, which took some of the characters straight from the cartoon. I tried to find out why it's called Jamie me the little pig in English rather than Janice, spelt J-A-N-I-S, and found out that it's actually the female version of the name John, although it can also be used as a male name alternative to the British name John. Well, that was a boring aside, sorry about that. I'm just amused by the idea of a pig called John, to be honest. I'll put a link in the description to the other videos that I've done on Dingo Pictures. There's no point in going over the history of the entire company again, or I'll have a mental breakdown. The short story is it was a German company consisting of a small handful of people who decided one day they were going to try and make a little bit of money by making some absolutely god-awful cartoons with some absolutely god-awful writing and some absolutely god-awful voice acting and then just lob them out for release across Europe. I've said before, I don't think these people were trying to scam anyone as such. I think they just maybe didn't realise quite how bad they were at doing cartoons or writing or voice acting or music or anything. And you can't really blame them for trying. I mean, we've all got to pay the rent. So Janice the Little Pig was released in 1996. That's the year after the film Babe was released. Because yes, like most of Dingo Pitcher's cartoons, it was trying to capitalise on a popular blockbuster film. However, like all of the Dingo Pitcher's cartoons, there's very little, if anything, recognisable in the cartoon that might make you think, oh yeah, this is definitely supposed to be some sort of budget version of the story of Babe. Thankfully, this is one of Dingo Pitcher's shorter cartoons, so the suffering won't last as long as with the other ones. But I have to tell you that this particular one gets dark. Like traumatize the children dark. Also, this one is an unusual one to get my attention because it was never ever made into a shitty PlayStation game, which as you know is kind of my thing. It did, however, get released both on VHS and DVD in Europe and America. This means that Midas Entertainment, who became Phoenix Games, thought this one wasn't good enough to buy and slap onto a PlayStation game because that was their thing. And let me tell you, the bar that Phoenix Games set was already so low, Satan's hung a nice set of swings from it. Whee. Jamie the Little Pig is one that is just plain awful, but it brings up philosophical questions, which I find quite interesting. And not just because I have opinions on factory farming or the fact that pigs are supremely intelligent animals that we have for some reason decided are the ones over dogs that get put in a sandwich. This film humanises our food in a way that makes us uncomfortable, that probably won't make anyone stop eating bacon, but it does give us an urge to take stock of our lucky lot in life and how easily we allocate the terms food or friends to the creatures entirely at our mercy around us. Or some bollocks, you know, let's just watch it. Let's do an experiment. I am going to do a rating of how much I am craving bacon, depending on whether or not the main character pisses me off. If by the end of the video I am shoving pig down my throat, it's because either the cartoon has pissed me off so much that I'm going to start eating bacon again, or my ex has come over. And I won't obviously be filming the latter if he that happens. Janice the little pig lives on a farm, of course, but we're not going to get to meet her right away because first it's absolutely essential that we learn all about this cockerel and this dog who is pissed off at it because it cock a doodle doos in French. You'll never learn. That French crying will make him crazy. Yeah, that's apparently enough of a problem to take up the intro of the film for 
God, I don't know, five minutes? It's cock-a-doodle-doo. Cock-a-doodle-doo, do you get it? Oh my God. Also, yes, that is how cockerel's cawing is written in French. Isn't it delightful how the sounds animals make are written so differently across languages? In Italy, this would be chikarichi. In Portugal, it's cocorococo. In Iceland, it's that. In Turkey, it's... Um... So this goat has been watching the cockerel and the dog have an argument and having a very fun time about it, and then gets excited because the French cockerel and this cat are about to mess each other up. Like, this goat is wildly excited. Come here, everyone, come here. I'll poke your eyes out there. Jesus Christ, dial it back, love. It must be slow on the farm if he's so keen for them to tear each other to bits. I think he might be a bit of a wanker. Men insulted me and I can't allow that. That goes against my honor. What honor do you mean, you crazy Gallic macho? Now, I want to say that was a xenophobic insult because I just heard garlic and that would be a knobhead's idea of what defines the French. You crazy Gallic macho! But I couldn't work out that second word, so I guess I'll just let it pass. And what are you doing crying here? It's midday! Ha! I have to make sure that everyone's awake when Mother Pig has her piglets. Oh, finally we're at the point of the whole cock a doodle do thing. The pig is about to give birth, so the cockerel was making sure that everybody was awake. You know, because everyone needs to see the horrendous process of a live animal shitting out multiple live animals with all the blood and the membranes and all of that. Mm -mm. Oh, yeah, that put me off. Bacon craving down. Well, like I said, the goat was very keen to get the cat and the cockerel fighting, so maybe this farm lot are used to a mortal combat level of boredom breaker. Out pops a little pig from the barn. Are you crazy? Back, 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 back you go. You're freshly born. You're not allowed to go out. Uh, are you the only one? There are usually more of you. Me? I'm the first one, but a few more came after me then. It got too cramped in there. And yeah, she can talk right away. She can count right away too. I think one, two, nine, 13, 27? Kind of. Already feeling a little bit bad about eating an animal that understands the concept of numbers. Now it's time for another argument about whether this dog is the boss. I, Alex, am the boss. That's what you think, huh? By the way, the dog is consistently a knobhead all the way throughout. That's his character. Anyway, the dog tells the pig that her job is to eat lots and get fat. Every animal has a job that he has to do. And your job as a pig is to eat all the leftovers and get as fat as you can. Is that an actual job that I can apply for? Because I would be fantastic at that. Rules are stupid. I do as I please, and now I'm going to take a look around. Wow, that is the worst attempt at barking I've ever heard from a voice actor. Was he all right? He sounded like he was choking on a cough sweet. I don't think there's any language where dogs bark like that. Oh, I stand corrected. By the way, what's your name? I love how this pig has backtalked to most of the farm animals, then gone off on her own before anyone thinks of even asking her name. Uh, Jenna, stay here is what my mother said as I left the barn. Not, not Jamie. Look, I'm just as confused as you are. Janice, well, we'll see about that. Now that's a good child. Drink up first and then lay down and join your brothers and sisters for a nap. I would put money on the Dingo Pictures voice actors actually making that sucking nipple sound. Now that's a good child. Now I'm just envisaging them doing a sort of next to the microphone and I've been put off food forever, I think. So, so. Don't want to get started this way. Go and lay down with Dave, D, Dozy, Beaky, Mick, and Titch. Sorry, is one of the piglets called Dave? I can't eat a pig called Dave. I can't eat a guy called Dave. I tried. Put it, put it down. No, even Margo, when I was young, Carp, I didn't want to sleep. And you seem quite in order. See you later. Wow. And you seem quite in order. See you later. Mic drop. For someone only a few minutes old, this pig is really plugged in, and sassy too. I know a lot of animals can walk pretty soon after birth, but delivering this level of spice? 
That's unexpected. Have you ever seen anything like it? I've never had a child like this before. Ah, so she's had lots of children before then. Where are they? Oh, they've been eaten, probably. You know, the kids. She's really nonchalant about it, but now I'm starting to feel a bit sad. She's lucky, actually, that she's not in those horrendous farrowing crates that most farmed pigs get put in, so there is that. Maybe that's why she's so upbeat. So Janice goes off on her own and no one seems to care, except this owl that makes an air raid siren noise. <laughs> Okay, yep. Why? Why, why is that the noise that they picked for an owl? Have they ever heard an owl before? Every time the team at Dingo Pitchers goes for a walk in a forest in the middle of the night, do they just assume that their country's been invaded? And she bumps into that knobhead goat that was at the start. And he's complaining because he wants to jump around, but the bell he's got gives him a headache. I don't trust myself to jump or hop anymore. You know, this character is incredibly unlikable, like aggressively unlikable, but I think we're supposed to root for him. So to help out, Janice takes the bell off the goat. By the way, this plot point with the jumping goat does come back. It's not unusual for a Dingo Pictures cartoon to have about 400 subplots happening in the background, usually irrelevant to the rest of the story. Although, as we will see, this one actually is. Yeah, I was surprised too. Oh no, the animals start kicking off amongst each other again. Oh no, I don't give a shit. All right, I'm putting the bacon meter up purely out of boredom at this point. She must make the milk for the cheese. First class goat's cheese. <laughs> well said, goat. Well said. C what was that? <laughs> she sounds like a backbencher in the Houses of Parliament. And me? What's my job? Uh-oh, now Janice is asking questions about her job. Is anyone, uh... Is anyone going to tell her that she's going to get eaten? You just have to get big and fat so that you can be sold. Sold? Why sold? She's told that her only purpose is to make babies. So presumably this is a Republican farm. That is rough, you know? She's literally still a baby and already being told her purpose in life is to create new life. Remember growing up to Disney cartoons where the female's sole purpose was to be saved by a male? Or how you were told that it was kind of all right for boys to f about but you had to save yourself for your husband? It's a thing in the pig world, apparently. I mean, that's, that's the subtext that I get in anyway. That's that's what I'm that's what I'm reading because I've it got a lot of internalized anger as a protest against gender norms I have personally shagged more than 367 males approximately 67 females and about 30 people who had no clue what they were but they'd had a tequila so you know Also, did you know there are genuinely people on this planet that think a vagina can be permanently stretched out by a penis morons I mean, I don't have a vagina, I have a penis, but if I did have a vagina, it would be able to strangle a small mammal. If you weren't so little, I would tan your behind, that's what I do. If I had a penny for the amount of times I've been told that. You see, it's all interlinked. Good God, that voice actor is fighting for his life over there. Can someone call him an ambulance? So this cow that lives in the same barn as Janice's mum offers some milk to Janice, but her babies are nowhere to be seen. Well, sadly, that's probably because they've been taken away to get eaten. Sad. But also, why isn't Janice's own mum giving her milk? Because she's outspoken. Isn't that a bit gross? Another mother offering her breast to your kid? Look, I'm just saying, if some random woman slapped out her breast to feed my baby, I'd be... I'd, I'd be a little bit... I suppose it depends on how tired I am. That is as right. That French squawking in the morning is enough to drive you crazy. Oh, good. More about that cockerel from the start. Yeah, I'm just getting pissed off now, so I'm starting to find the idea of turning Janice into a bacon sandwich a lot more appealing. He insists on being called Monsieur Lecoq. He insists on being called Monsieur Lecoq. I am trying to maintain some level of maturity here, but that cow just called a rooster Monsieur Lecoq. Do you understand how difficult this job is for me? I just had to say that sentence without choking on my own laughter. This is a kid's cartoon. 
Janice already knows the French for cock a doodle do, you know, because of the start. Cock a doodle do, cock Very good, Janice. And you know what? This is a rare, very, very rare instance of a Dingo Pictures cartoon showing some plot integrity. Here you go, Dingo Pictures. I've got a trophy for you. I've just put it in this bag of pennies. Hang on. Here you go, Dingo Pictures. It's a trophy for the absolute bare minimum of script writing. It is mine, but you can have it. I'm very proud of you. Now, you might be wondering what was the payoff of the cockerel being French? Well, Janice wants to learn French. A bit of course, uh, what do you want to learn? Why? Literally no reason. Literally, it just comes out of nowhere. It's a plot that starts and makes no sense, and then that's sort of it. It just it just wanders off into the ether, and no one mentions it ever again. It's you got. So after that weird aside, Janice very rudely starts eating the dog's dinner, which is grim when you think about what goes into dog food. Literally, the bits of pig that humans mostly refuse to eat unless it's put into a sausage. You know, pig ear, asshole, trotters, snout. There is no doubt that Janice is eating her bread when she's going at the dog's bowl there. You know, for kids. You can eat it alone, it tastes horrible. When it happens to be pork. You oh shit, the cartoon was way ahead of me. When it happens to be pork. You this dog gives no shits. When it happens to be pork. You just openly admitted that his dinner is dead pig. Poor Janice, this is awful. The cat tries to tell the pig that no, it's not actually pig, presumably to spare her feelings. You can't always believe what's on the can. So shut up. <laughs> Burnt. And then she just runs away. Wow, this is dark. Dark, dark, dark. Oh, the goat, the goat's back. So the goat is having the best time jumping around without that bell. So then Janice joins in, starts practicing jumping and bucking with him. Oh, that's delightful. What a lovely time for everyone. All right, this bit does go on forever though. This is, I'm, can we not? Getting annoyed, thinking of eating the pig. <laughs> oh shit, sudden hands and really scary music. Take it easy, Janice. That was no monster and no fiend. That was the farmer. We all belong to him. Janice's mum is so resigned to her fate. And that's when I ran away. Where did you run away from? What do we have here? What? What is that? What? What is that? What? Excuse me, what? Hello? What? What? Hello, yes. What in the absolute shit? Yes, I'll hold. Yes, that is a pig standing on his hind legs, which is terrifying enough. But what I'm really upset about is the fact he has hands with fingers. His fingers. What utter horror is this? Where did this creature come from? The local mad scientist lab? No, he's actually come from a farm, apparently, but he ran away. So this pig grew hands and fingers after leaving the farm, or stole a human's hands and sewed them onto his trotters. You know, either explanation is horrifying. I'm called Mr. Miller, and I'm passing through. So friggin' Lederhosen pig tries to tell Janice that she's gonna be taken to a slaughterhouse if she stays at the farm, but she doesn't believe him. No, she's still happy at the idea of being made into a baby birthing machine like some kind of trad wife, which is fine, I guess, if that's the life that she wants. I suppose since the only alternative apparent to her is to turn into a Lederhosen wearing fingered abomination, that makes sense. Oh, you poor silly little pig. You don't know what happens to us when we grow big like me. Earlier, we saw Janice was dexterous enough with trotters to unclip a bell from a goat, which makes me think that Lederhosen pig grew fingers just to show off. You know, like putting a spoiler on the back of a Vauxhall Corsa. I think he might be a knobhead as well. There's a lot of knobheads in this cartoon. At this stage, I'm getting really bored and annoyed with the fact that Jenny's just refuses to believe that she's in any kind of danger on a farm. And that kind of makes me want to eat her to prove to her that she's going to be eaten. Also, she is really annoying in general. I do kind of just want her to shut up. And I feel like the best way of doing that is to put her in a bap. Poor Janice worries that the abomination might be telling the truth and that she's going to be made into sausages. What Mr. Miller says is true, and that's why I should get big and fat to be turned into pork chops later. You know, for kids. 
This entire time she just asks questions, then refuses the answer if she doesn't like it. She doesn't believe pigs get eaten, she doesn't believe humans are gonna hurt her, she refuses to believe the dog was eating pig meat. She's kind of insufferable. You know, the film this one is trying to capitalise off, Babe, sparked a growth in vegetarianism, or at least the interest in it. The guy who played the farmer in Babe actually became a vegan after being in the film, although he had already been a vegetarian for a good long while. I wouldn't say the film set out to do that, or the book that it was based on. It's very matter of fact about farm animals' fate, and doesn't really try to guilt humans. It's really more a case of, this is the situation, take it or leave it. Dingo Pictures also weren't trying to make anyone vegetarian with this film, because subtext isn't a thing that they could do. I know I said at the start of this video that the reason why this cartoon interests me is because it opens up philosophical questions about where our food comes from, but that doesn't mean that I think Dingo Pictures actually intended to make us think hard about stuff. All of that is entirely by accident, I'm very sure. But the biggest difference between the pig Babe and the pig Janice is early on in the film I cared about Babe. We are now nearly two thirds of the way through this cartoon and I could not give less of a shit about this pig. Honestly, cook her or don't cook her, I don't give a shit. If I'm kinda hungry now, so... Oh no, a truck's come to the farm. You know what's coming. This is awful. Janice is terrified. And then some of the other animals are like, no, no, you're not going to get eaten. It's fine. But I'm not big and fat. And I can't have babies myself yet. Look at her shaking. Oh, I feel bad now. I feel bad. <laughs> So she gets sold and chucked onto the truck, but it's not because she's going to be made big and fat to have babies. The animals realise that she's going to be eaten now. They don't only take big pigs, sometimes they take little ones too, like you. You're supposed to become a roast suckling pig. Wow, cat, that is tactless. You may as well tell Janice what kind of gravy she's going to be served with, what vegetables, whether her skin will be sheared off and put in a bap. Just, just go all out, traumatise the poor kid a bit more, come on, let's go. While we're on the subject of traumatising, how about we traumatise the literal children this film was supposed to be shown to? Because as soon as we get to the slaughterhouse, there is no mucking around. There's no, don't worry kids, Janice got taken to a big field where she runs around all day and eats lots of treats with her friends. There's not even any, the pigs get put gently to sleep. It's a line of pig's legs rolling along, blood dripping, some slabs of dead pig meat all piled up with the skin still attached, pig entrails looped up into sausages in big piles, and oh Jesus! Hello, yes? What in the absolute shit? Yes, I'll hold. Hey, hey kids, kids, look at this, look at this, look at this dead pig's head with the hooves of its brothers and sisters all mushed up behind it like a fucked up Colin the Caterpillar cake. You like that, kids? You like to have nightmares? Yeah, screw you, kids. You chose to watch a film about a talking pig on a farm. Well, it's time you learned about the real world, sunshine. Stop crying. Stop it. Nope, forget it, I'm not eating anything ever again. I just live off air and anxiety like an A&E nurse. What am I gonna do? I have to think of something. Yep, it's Carvery time. There, they're selling the first of us. Uh, look at how happy that baby pig is, thinking that she's gonna be taken away so she can eat loads of food and then have babies. It's not gonna happen, love, you're gonna get eaten. Right now, be gone. But the pigs she gets chucked in with at the slaughterhouse don't believe her when she tells them that they're all about to die. And also, they're kind of really friggin' rude. Stop your moaning. There's really no need to be afraid. I think this is another rare occasion of intelligent script writing here. Obviously, it's trying to make us, the viewer, not care about these particular pigs, you know, by making them into dickheads. Like, wow, they are so rude, so it doesn't matter they're about to be brutally gassed after being shocked with cattle prods. 
But that's a really problematic justification to present to children. If it was okay for things to die purely because they're dickheads, then it wouldn't be a problem murdering PR executives or estate agents. But I am afraid. Look around you. If those aren't dead pigs, then I don't know. You know, Janice has got a point here. Are these pigs not seeing what she's seeing? There's bits of body parts. Do they think this is some sort of weird art installation? Do they not recognise friggin' Fred from the next field over made into this horrifying Lego set? Like, if you walked into a room and there was bits of human arm and, and leg and some lad's head, is your first response gonna be, oh, that was probably made of cake? These pigs are stupid. They're very rude and they're stupid. Chuck them in a sandwich, come on, let's go. And this is where we finally get a payoff for that utter slog of a plot point about the goat and the bell. Pigs can't usually jump and book, see? And you'll kill yourself. Pigs can't climb or jump. But because she spent ages pissing about with the goat and bucking and jumping, she can climb up on the back of some big pigs and jump over the fence. Also, yes, pigs can jump, that's just a myth, but look, just go with it, okay? We're nearly at the end. Let's just white knuckle it now. It's a real novelty in a Dingo Pictures cartoon to have a subplot actually have a resolution and a point. It didn't make the whole thing worth it at all, but it's nice to know that these precious minutes of my life I've just pissed away were put to moderately better use than usual. After escaping, she runs into that abomination that we saw earlier. Mr. Miller! He's obviously not had a bath since, because he's now a wild pig. That's the moustache is gone as well, which is, that is a plus. But why would he retain the lederhosen if he's a wild pig? Like, surely wild pigs don't care about, you know, letting it all hang out? I have no idea. Maybe nakedness is just a line this guy won't cross. Now, back at the farm, the animals, guess what? Yep, they're having another friggin' argument. Like, God. Just shut up. Janice isn't dead. They're all angry at each other about losing Janice for some reason. They're all kind of blaming each other and being annoyed and they can't agree with what's happened to her. And her mum still doesn't believe the whole thing about the slaughterhouse, by the way, so she's a lost cause. And then they're giving the dog grief for eating pork and saying that he could be eating Janice, which is cute considering the dog notably didn't give a shit about Janice when she was here. And then Janice just shows up anyway with abomination in tow. Well, thank God. Now I can continue to eat canned food. Wow, what a dick. You know your pig friends get put in your food and you still want to eat it? I can't think of anything so tasty that I'd be happy to eat it knowing it had human in it. Unless there were humans I did not care for. In tamales. I promise you, Margot, that I look after your daughter until she's big enough to look after herself. Yes, I suppose that would be best for Janice. She would never have really become a house pig. So her mum just lets Janice go off with this weird guy. And that's, that's it. She leaves the farm and she goes and jumps in a puddle. So Janice left her entire family behind to get brutally slaughtered and eaten. That's, that's the end. Mum pig, gone get eaten. Baby pigs, gone get eaten. Including the one called Dave. Gone get eaten. Cow, probably gone get eaten. Monsieur Le Coq, crispy fried. Kentucky fried cock, gone get eaten. Yes, this is one of the better written Dingo Pictures cartoons, but I don't really understand what I was supposed to take away from it. You know, apart from advanced PTSD. Can you imagine being a sensitive child and seeing this scene? It would mess you up. We don't like to know where our food comes from when it's cut off something that used to be intelligent and alive, but this is not the way to broach that subject. Especially with, you know, a toddler. You've got to approach that kind of thing carefully so the kid doesn't grow up to burst into tears every time he walks past a deli counter. I just feel sad. There's no uplifting story here. The first 70% of it is a bunch of animals denying that they're going to get killed and eaten or arguing around this stupid Monsieur Lecoq character. And by the way, that subplot never goes anywhere either, but we wasted a good eight minutes on it. And then the last bit is just more animals being rude to each other while the main character goes off to live with a weirdo in a forest. It was rubbish. But would it make me stop eating meat? No. Would it make me cry fully clothed in the shower? Also no. So, eh. Eh. Meh. 
Now there is a series of Dingo Pictures cartoons which star this absolute knobhead of a raccoon called Wabu. He's definitely one of the more well-known characters that they came up with. If you do want me to cover this idiot, then let me know in the comments. And I'll consider it. I'll think about it, okay? I'm not saying that I'll do it. You know me, I'm always this close to a mental breakdown, so I've got to be realistic here. All right, well, thank you very much for watching and for supporting me and this channel. I've got to um, pick up a lot of pennies. Okay.